ARMS begins with instructions on how to hold the controllers. The other options are visible at the bottom, and then the title screen is shown. I'm not interested in the motion controls for this game. While they do work and don't have any noticeable problems, it's just more comfortable to play the game with a Joy-Con grip, and the thumb up position is a fine position to play the game in, but I personally prefer the other formations because it's important to be more precise with your attacks in fighting games. The menu is very fluid, however this game doesn't have a lot of replay value. This game is very fun to play and control, but it gets old or repetitive fast, at least if you've already unlocked almost all of the collectibles. The things you can collect are these badges that serve as a cosmetic and this game's achievement system. You can equip them and they can be seen by other players when you play online. I like the badges and I like that this game has an achievement system, although I don't feel inclined to collect more badges. You can randomly get them with no hints. They also aren't captivating enough to play more. You also get coins of various amounts depending on each achievement. The badges also look nice and when you select them they make a little sound effect. This currency can be spent on a minigame called the Arms Getter. It has various timers and it can help you unlock new weapons called arms. If you unlock the same arm twice, it'll get a plus version that boosts the damage the arms give by 10. Each character has signature arms, but you can switch what arms are equipped for them. Each arm has different damage dealt and controlled differently when launched. They also have different types. Arms without a type are null. These are the buff, bub, megaton, and the clapback arms. I was bothered by the fact that the buff and bub are almost completely identical besides the color. They also change the size of the arms except for the clapback, that just reflects arms but with more power. The buff and bub arms don't even have different speeds. There isn't three blinding type arms either, so it would have been good to give one of these that type. The fire type arm can knock an opponent down in one charged punch. It's not too noticeable at first, but it's certainly important. It's best against fighters like Master Mummy and Mechanica who have super armor. The stun type arm freezes the opponent for a second. This also isn't very noticeable in its use, but it's still best for quick follow-up attacks. The electric type arm disables fighters arms with one punch. With them unable to throw punches for a short amount of time, this is useful for grabbing your opponents and attacking them. Wind type arms do the same thing as fire arms to big opponents, but instead of knocking them down, it moves them. Explosive arms are my favorite. They can deal a lot of damage and look really cool, but if you have them charged and you get punched in the explosive arm that's charged, then it will explode and damage you. My favorite arm in general is the nade. It's very compact, effective, and it looks nice. The ice type arms slow down opponents and prevent them from charging up their arms. It also prevents max brass from buffing up. The blinding arm obscures the view of the fight for a short period of time, and it also goes away faster if you were knocked down, and the poison type deals damage by one point every half second after a charged poison punch is thrown. The arms variety is very nice. There are some that are objectively better than others in combat, and some that are too similar to one another. However, besides the imbalance of the arms, or the arms being similar to some of the others, I do like the arms and I think the system makes the gameplay more intriguing. There's only a little bit of arms that feel the same. Most of them add a unique style to the fights. In ARMS, its major single player mode is the Grand Prix. There are also other modes like the Team Battle and a separate area to play minigames like Hoops and V-Ball. The characters in ARMS are very detailed and interesting to see move around and talk. The game has very good aesthetics and graphics, and its characters are very expressive and memorable. Except for Masongo. Whenever I play as him, I tend to have fun with his gimmick, and I think he's cool, but for some reason I keep forgetting that he's in the game. He tends to be surprising to see. He introduced the Poison Type ARM that was released in later updates for the game. There are other characters in ARMS that became usable in updates that I found to be more interesting. The fact that Masongo wasn't in the game at launch and that there were other characters that were playable probably had something to do with him not being memorable. Springman is the all-around character, but he does have some gimmicks. If you charge your arms for a bit and let go, a blue circle surrounds him and he can deflect arms that are launched at him. He can also keep his arms charged indefinitely if his health is 75% depleted. I generally like that Springman can still be interesting while being the basic character. Ribbon Girl can jump multiple times in the air. I like her singing and it can be heard in the game's menu and in her signature stage. In general, the music for this game is very good. It's lively and fits the tone well. Ninjaro is my least favorite fighter. He can dodge attacks by blocking. When he blocks, he can warp away from oncoming arms. The problem is that it's one to one with any possible attack. There's no stop to this unless you grab him. This makes Ninjara impervious to rush attacks. Ninjara plays fine besides probably being the hardest fighter to defeat. Master Mummy is a heavyweight that doesn't get knocked down easily without an arm type. He can also regenerate his health when he guards. I haven't encountered a time where this was an overpowered feature, so I suppose it's fine. Min Min can deflect oncoming grabs and punches when she dashes in the air. And when she grabs an opponent, she can permacharge one of her arms. It's nice that she appears in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as a fighter. Min Min is also a good fighter here too. Mechanica is another heavyweight. She uses a mech to fight, and I like that she can hover in the air when you hold the jump button after pressing it. Twintel uses her hair as arms. She can also slow down any oncoming attacks when dashing. It's useful for dodging arms, but I don't tend to use it successfully. Bite and Bark's gimmick is that Bite's dog Bark can punch when you charge your arms, and you can jump on Bark to get a boosted jump. They look nice visually, but without Bark, I think there wouldn't be much of a gimmick, unfortunately. Kid Cobra has a slow dash, but if his arms are charged, he can dash a little faster and twice in a row with little delay. 
It's certainly useful, but I'm not too interested in Kid Cobra. Felix is my favorite character in ARMS. He can stretch his body if you hold the jump button, and while holding it you can lean him. He can also crouch, and this has been good for dodging grabs. I like his character design, and he's a lot of fun to move around too. There were five characters that became playable in future updates. Max Brass is a heavyweight with a lot of Springman's abilities. He can also buff himself up to keep his arms charged for a little. He feels really powerful to use. It's fun to buff him up and attack. Lollipop is really fun to watch. One of her abilities is that she can bounce while guarding and move too. Besides that, she's really fun to use for her personality and character design. Masongo uses a spirit that gives him a boost in a certain stat for a short time. If he charges his arms long enough, he can wear a spirit as a mask. The spirit has three abilities when worn in a specific color. Red gives you more attack power and compromises your movement speed. Blue gives you faster speed and lowers the damage you give. Yellow does the same as blue, but instead of boosting your speed, it boosts your rush gauge. I like the spirit. It looks cute, but still, Masongo isn't too interesting. Springtron is a clone of Springman. He looks really cool and is mostly the same besides having a new attack. If you hold the charge button long enough, you can do a stunning move that disables any arms launched. It may seem like a move that's too powerful, but against computers they know to wait until the charge is finished. It's certainly not as hard to dodge as Ninjara's guard for the most part. Dr. Coil can spawn an extra arm after fully charging hers, and she can levitate instead of jumping. It feels nice, and growing an extra arm is too. In the Grand Prix, you go through 10 to 11 matches depending on the selected difficulty. If you pick the difficulties level 4 or 5, you can fight the boss headlock after max brass as usual. If you select the difficulty 6 or 7, you fight Dr. Coil instead of Max Brass. If your difficulty is level 4 or higher and you haven't lost once, you're challenged to fight Springtron. When you win a Grand Prix, the game plays credits, and when you return to the menu, you get a mark on the level of the character you've completed. It gets repetitive to play, even if you're playing as different characters. Although I do like the Grand Prix overall. As you progress with the Grand Prix, you fight random fighters except for the last fighter or headlock. You also compete in at least two sport minigames. You can play these in the versus matches. There's the regular matches with CPU adjustable difficulty and how many computers are in the battle. And there's also team battles. In these, you must be tethered to your partner. It's rough to move around, and when you're thrown, it damages your partner too. And when your teammate is KO'd, it takes a bit of time for them to despawn. It'd be best if teammates disappeared as soon as possible after being knocked out, so they won't be a hindrance or anything. I don't hate the idea of the teammates, but I definitely would have preferred the option to be separated. Although I don't know how I feel about friendly fire being on in this mode. It'd probably be better to have friendly fire if tethering was an option. Overall, team matches are decent. Hoops is a basketball game where you have to grab your opponent and then throw them into the hoop. If you rush attack the opponent, you can launch them into the hoop immediately. Shots made within the line is 2 points, and outside of the line is 3. Whoever gets the 10 points first wins. It's a good minigame, and the little detail of the floor squeaking when you dash is nice. B-ball is incredibly simple. How this game is played is that there's a ball at the center of the court. You punch the ball to the other side of the court. Whoever gets the 5 points first wins. You can do a better hit of the ball by using a grab and then a punch. The ball also explodes which can knock you down for a bit, and after some time passes it will stop being in the air and fall down and explode. It's incredibly simple, but I don't mind its inclusion. Skillshot is a game where you have to hit the targets to score the most points. You can grab the opponent and throw them to the side to delay them for a bit. It's satisfying to play. 1-100 is fun to play too. It starts off simple and then as you progress it becomes more difficult. You defeat 100 enemies and for every 10 you defeat an item is dropped. After you defeat the 99th enemy, you have to defeat the final one that's wearing a headlock. It's a fun but repetitive mode. If you complete a character's 1-100 game, then you can unlock their signature stage for other fighters to play on. Headlock Scramble is a mode where you and up to 4 players fight in a match with a headlock added in the stage to make the fight more intense. Headlock is a cool boss to fight, so being able to control him as a power-up feels even cooler. Headlock can add 4 extra arms and changes your rush attack. This headlock is worn for a short amount of time until it launches away. It can also be knocked out of you when you get grabbed. In the game mode I like called Arms Test, you go through matches that go on until you lose, and it gives you random arms every match. You can play this game online, where you play random game mode matches. If you play in ranked matches, you can only play in regular battles, and not headlock or other minigame matches like the other one. You can leave the search for ranked matches on while you're doing something else, but in single player modes only. The online variety could have given you more options for what game modes to play online or offline, but I do like it. I especially think that it's great that in spite of ARMS' minimum amount of activities in its game, it manages to sustain my attention for long sessions of playing. Because of how the game is designed, even the game physics and simple mechanics can occasionally lead to interesting visual effects. This game looks really interesting, and I love its art style, and it's really a fun fighting game to play. There's a ton of detail to admire in such a short game like this. This may not be worth the $60 when I first bought it in 2017, or even now, but I'd say that it utilizes its gimmick in a very interesting and memorable way. ARMS is a good fighting game, and I hope it gets a new installment in the future that adds more replayability and interesting game modes. And with Min Min making an appearance in Smash, it gives me higher hopes that this game will spring back.